it's coming okay you can tell me when i need to start huh? yes sir you can start okay okay and i have the video first yes sir yeah A very let me start yes sir yes sir you can start okay okay yeah a very good evening to all and um, thank you mr arun kumar for uh, giving a very nice and kind uh, introduction my special thanks to mr joseph he had been pursuing me to give this uh, talk i was very reluctant initially to give a web talk i did not know how effective it will be of course uh, my seniors uh, dr raj nair and uh, dr chandra jordan both are my seniors at the baba atomic research center they were kind enough and they have called me and said that everything will be fine so i am here to give a talk on nuclear medicine and this very nice uh, topic emerging trends in application of nuclear medicine for the diagnosis and therapy of cancer this was suggested by dr nair thank you dr nair but uh, let me tell you i will be uh, very uh, giving a uh, very beginning a uh, very <coughs> basic information about uh, nuclear medicine how nuclear medicine will be used for the diagnosis and therapy of certain diseases and more importantly that of cancer many people ask me what do i do for my life i tell that i make radioactive medicines and they are uh, uh, very surprised you know they look at me with um, uh, eyebrows they think that you know what am i doing making radioactive medicines i tell them yes of course i make radioactive medicines you know why they are surprised because the knowledge of knowledge of these people about radioactivity is bad they know radioactivity is associated with bad incidents such as the august 6 hiroshima atomic bomb day about uh, 75 years back couple of days later again in nagasaki it happened so there is always a negativity about uh, radioactivity and when i say it I, when i tell that you know we are using radioactivity for uh, as a medicine they are surprised you know uh, of course there are a lot of peaceful application of um, radioactivity we know that we have this uh, kudam kulam um, nuclear power plant just about 100 kilometers from uh, uh, about 50 kilometers from kerala border it is making a lot of electricity and the people also know about radiation therapy that is you know whenever uh, there is a cancer patient these patients are taken for uh, radiation therapy so they know about these two techniques but they are not very sure about what is nuclear medicine so today my aim will be to tell you what is nuclear medicine how nuclear medicine is done and how useful is nuclear medicine for diagnosis and imaging you go to a big hospital uh, you will find a board you know uh, department of nuclear medicine also there will be in a no entry board kept there with a big radioactive sign so people are really wondering what is happening in this nuclear medicine uh, departments so this is what i will tell now what is nuclear medicine nuclear medicine is very different from uh, radiotherapy we know radiotherapy let us say that you know we have a cancer like this we have the radiation source a cobalt 60 or a linear accelerator which is kept away and it is giving radiation to this uh, cancer similarly this uh, source can be brought to this side and also you can give the radiation this radiation is killing the cancer and this radiotherapy is quite known to most people but what happens to the radiation which is coming to these sites the radiation which is coming to these sites radiation which is coming to these sites there are healthy tissues these healthy tissues also get damaged now the cancer is not always at a single spot the cancer will be at several spots as you can see in this particular cartoon you find that the cancer is spread at different parts of the body and probably a radiotherapy is not the best for that now in nuclear medicine what we do we make a radioactive medicine 
the radioactive medicine will be injected to the patient through one of his hands or maybe he will uh, take it through the mouth and this radioactive medicine will be so sensitive so specific we make the radioactive medicine specific such that it will go to different cancer cells now you can assume that this is the cancer and the radioactive medicine has accumulated at these different places in the body and now you have the radiation sitting there now we can do two things one is if you take a imaging instrument if you take an imaging instrument you can uh, do an imaging of this cancer you should have an imaging instrument now if you are going to put lot of radioactivity this radioactivity can also give sufficient radiation dose and kill these cancers so this is how a typical uh, nuclear medicine uh, department uh, will look like you see this uh, very big uh, very good instrument this we call it as a gamma camera or a single photon emission computer tomography machine now let us assume that you know a patient is having cancer and the you know, the oncologist want to know whether the cancer has spread or whether the cancer is primary secondary or tertiary now they will refer this patient to the our uh, nuclear medicine departments and when the patient comes to the nuclear medicine departments what we do what is done is that a small radioactive medicine will be injected to the patient and the patient will be allowed to wait outside for about the two or three hours and subsequent to that he will be taken through this ma machine and what is this machine this machine is nothing but this is having a, a detectors which can detect radiation which is coming out you know sodium iodide crystals this will be having couple of uh, big sodium iodide crystals which is kept on both the sides and you can do an imaging of the patient and after getting the signals the image will be processed and finally you are going to can you see this uh, image on the right hand side hello yeah if you look at this image now such an image when it is given to a doctor the doctor is very happy the doctor knows that uh, the cancer is uh, spread into all the places see you have the uh, the cancer which is there in the bone the cancer is there in the um, uh, vertebra the cancer is everywhere now the decision is very simple for the doctor suppose you know whenever a patient a cancer patient goes to a nuclear medicine department or a, to an oncologist he want to know whether it is a case for a surgery whether it is a case for uh, radiotherapy whether it is a case for uh, chemotherapy or whether it is a case for palliative therapy so the surgeon will look at this image and will tell that okay look the cancer has spread to all over the body i cannot do anything now the radiotherapist again he will look at this um, image and he will tell that look the cancer is spread to different part maybe you know i cannot do much but the radiation oncologist will tell that okay this patient can be treated with some uh, chemotherapy some chemo can be given some targeted therapy can be given and also the nuclear medicine physician will tell that this radiation which is accumulating in different parts of the body different uh, parts of the body can be sort of treated with a nuclear medicine so now we know we can uh, use a radioactivity by injecting into a patient we can do an imaging and we can also do a therapy now i will like to introduce to you to one of the earliest nuclear medicine uh, procedures you know we all have a gland called the thyroid gland the thyroid gland is situated on, in our um, neck of our uh, body and uh, the purpose of this thyroid gland is that whenever we take food the iodine from the food will be collected by this uh, thyroid gland and the thyroid gland is going to accumulate this uh, iodine it will be converted to the hormones the t3 and t4 and this t3 and t4 hormones are responsible for our body metabolism if you you, you will uh, hear a lot of people telling you know i have thyroid i have thyroid means what everybody has got thyroid but some people have a hyperthyroidism that means the thyroid is working more 
some people are having a hypothyroidism the thyroid is not working to the extent what it should be now we know what is iodized salt iodized salt is uh, we take iodized salt because iodine will get accumulated to the thyroid and the thyroid hormones will be produced in ad adequate quantities now instead of iodized salt if i take a radioactive iodine iodine 131 suppose we take it you will find that this iodine 131 just like the inactive iodide will go and accumulate in the thyroid glands suppose this is the thyroid glands and uh, after giving sodium iodide if the patient is kept under the gamma camera under this uh, machine you will get an image like this of, of the thyroid now what do you find you find that there is a certain amount of high amount of activity what is present here now the doctor is interested to know whether this is a hyperthyroidism or a thyroid cancer so probably what he will do he will do a biopsy the biopsy sample will be taken out and it will be going and they will see whether it is a cancer and if it is a cancer what sort of thyroid cancer is there are different type of uh, thyroid cancers three or four different type of cancers are there now suppose it is a hyperthyroidism that is you know you the gland is little more active all what you need to do is that you give little amount of radioactivity maybe about 10 to 20 milligree of radioactivity and that part of the gland will be killed so the patient will become normal maybe the patient will become hypo and once it is hypo you will try to give some um, hormonal supplement to the patient and the patient will be fine now looking at the same thing the cancer when there is a thyroid cancer when there is thyroid cancer what the patient what the doctor will do the moment it is cancer the thyroid will be removed this is called a total thyroidectomy the doctor removes the thyroid and after removing it the patient will be sent to the nuclear medicine department again we will give one more ride in activity to the patient then we will try to do one we will do one scan and find out how much of the cancer is remaining at different parts of the body and after finding the different parts of the body this iodine we will the large dose of radio iodine will be given so the large dose of radio iodine will go and stick to all the thyroid cancers and the thyroid cancer will be killed so this is the treatment of thyroid cancer the surgical removal of cancer identified by nuclear imaging a large dose of iodine is given to the patient then the patients are given uh, subsequent to that the patient will become normal but their thyroid thyroid is not there so they will have to be given thyroid hormone as a supplement that is you take a small pill of uh, thyroxin maybe 100 microgram um, every day and the patient will be fine and uh, this particular cancer would that uh, the people who have got thyroid uh, cancer treated with radio iodine they live full life that means the thyroid cancer can be completely cured by using radio iodine therapy in fact this is the oldest therapy that is iodine therapy is practiced since 1946 so it is almost about uh, 75 years immediately after the second world war Uh, there was a looking what shall we do with all these reactors which is uh, around the world can we use it for the peaceful applications so how does uh, the radioactivity works uh, to kill the cancer we know what is cancer the cancer is nothing but a disease to the cell the cell we have about 36 uh, trillion cells in our uh, human body all the cells are the same except that every cell is told to practice a certain work for the body the brain cells will work in a different way the cells in the pancreas will make the hormone the bone cells will become work in a different manner now what is cancer the cancer is nothing but the cell is supposed to work for about a few few months a few uh, some time and after some time the cell is supposed to die this is called the programmed death or apoptosis but the programmed cell death does not happen and the cancer cell will start dividing it will divide it will divide and it will start multiplying and it will form in the form of a big cancer 
So in order to kill this cancer cell, what is important is that we can use radiation, the radiation, the radio pharmaceutical, whatever radio pharmaceutical, what we are injecting, it should come to the cell, it will enter into the human cell and it will start irradiating the cell. So what will happen then? Then we have the DNA, the DNA molecule will be scissioned. It will be broken into two pieces and once the DNA is broken into two pieces, the cancer cannot further grow. So this is the basis of cancer therapy using radiation, whether it is a radiotherapy or whether it is um, targeted therapy, that is you give by an injection, this is how the therapy is done. So coming to how is nuclear medicine done? The nuclear medicine is done, a radioactive material is administered to the patient in tracer dose, an imaging is done to detect the disease, a large, radio, a large dose is given to kill the cancer cells. How to accomplish this? This is important. We need a molecule called radio pharmaceuticals. So I am trying to introduce now you to a term called radio pharmaceuticals. A radio pharmaceutical is a medical preparation containing a radio isotope. Again, I have introduced one more new, new term which is a radio isotope. So the radio pharmaceutical must be useful for either for diagnosis or for therapy. Now I have already introduced one radio pharmaceutical that is nothing but sodium iodide. Sodium iodide in iodine 131 form. So I talked about radio isotope. Important to know what is radio isotope. For that, we will definitely go to the fundamentals. We know what is atom. What is atom? The atom is nothing but uh, you have the nucleus, we have uh, electrons uh, surrounding there. Now in the atom, we have uh, protons and we have neutrons. And uh, this of course is uh, three neutrons and uh, four, uh, three protons and uh, three protons and four neutrons. This is nothing but lithium. Now, <clears throat> we can have actually, instead of uh, four neutrons, suppose I add one more neutron, this will become a lithium uh, eight. If I remove one neutron from it, it will become lithium five. This lithium five, lithium six, lithium seven, lithium eight, etc., are called actually isotopes. And if they are not stable, we call them as radioactive. Now the radioactivity comes because you know for every element, every element there is a fixed number of neutrons needed for the protons. Now look at the, uh, this is a proton neutron um, ratio is plotted here. We know the hydrogen can exist without neutron. That is the simply a proton is there. The helium has got uh, two protons and two neutrons. And when it comes to actually uranium, we have actually 92 protons and maybe about 130 or 140 neutrons. So if the number of neutrons are more, it will be radioactive. The number of neutrons are less, it will be radioactive. So we have actually two different type of radionuclides. One we call it as the neutron excess isotope and the other one we call it as the neutron deficient isotope. Simple. Uh, we know fluorine. Fluorine has got nine protons and uh, 10 neutrons. So fluorine uh, 19 is what we get it in our nature. Now if I take, add one neutron to it, we will get uh, fluorine 20. If I take one neutron out of fluorine, I get fluorine 18. So this is what we do or what I do in Cochin. We make this fluorine 18. This fluorine 18 is converted to a radio pharmaceutical and that radio pharmaceutical is sold to or is given to all the cancer hospitals where they are using it for PET CT imaging. So we will uh, go ahead and see how these uh, neutron excess isotopes are produced and how these neutron deficient isotopes are produced. 
So neutron deficient isotopes, we use it for uh, an imaging modality called PET-CT, which I will explain it a little later. Neutron excess radionuclides, we use it for um, imaging. We use it also for therapy. So how do we make these radio, uh, radio isotopes? Radio isotopes are actually a neutron excess isotope. We have the nuclear reactors. The nuclear reactors, we have the uranium-235, which will be fissioning. And when uranium-235 is fissioning, there are a lot of extra neutrons. Every uranium-235, when it um, fissions, there will be two or three neutrons will be produced. And we can put a target into this nuclear reactor and then you will get a neutron excess radionuclide. If you look at this, uranium lutetium-176 and gamma, a neutron is entering and you get lutetium-177. This is one of the radionuclides which is very important for cancer therapy. And of course, a lot of work had been done by the Baba Atomic Research Center from my group in the development of lutetium-177 radiopharmaceutical. We are considered as one of the pioneers in lutetium therapy in the whole world. Now, today is a very important day. Today is the 22nd August. Uh, and 70 years back, in 22nd August 1950, the first nuclear reactor which was built for the peaceful application was commissioned or it went critical at the Brookhaven National Laboratory at the United States. This is a reactor which was uh, uh, commissioned in 1950. It is a graphite uh, research reactor. That means you are using graphite as a moderator. You are using graphite as a <coughs> graphite moderated reactor. Now from uh, 50 to 56, we were very fortunate. The first reactor, uh, nuclear reactor in India was commissioned in uh, 19. 56, that again in this month of uh, August only. And this is thanks to the vision of uh, Homi Jahangir Baba. He had, uh, he had come from back from uh, UK uh, because of the Second World War. He could not go to go back to London for uh, pursuing his research studies. Then he had um, induced the Tatas to start the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Then subsequent to that, thanks to the his association with uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the Department of Atomic Energy has started. And in, 50, in six years, that is, you know, US had the first reactor in 1950. And within six years, we had our reactor, the Apsara reactor, functioning at Trombe. And uh, this is the Apsara building. When, uh, when we have joined BRC, our training school used to be very near the Apsara reactor. And uh, this is the reactor uh, core. Uh, this is a pool type reactor. The moderator is water, the coolant is water, and uh, uranium to enrich uranium 235 is used. And thanks to the availability of this nuclear reactor, back in 1956, India started radioisotope program very, very early. We are one of the early entrants in the world in radioisotope program and in radio pharmaceuticals. So we make a lot of uh, radionuclides for, uh, in this reactor. The most important of it is actually molybdenum because molybdenum is used for making a radionuclide called uh, technetium 99M. And this radionuclide is used in the world for diagnosis and almost about 50 million studies are done every year in the whole world. And this is used for cardiac studies. This is used for imaging um, cancer. So it's an important uh, radionuclide. And of course, I have spoken about the ID-131 um, radionuclide used for uh, treating thyroid um, cancer. Uh, we use uh, samarium-153 for the treatment of cancer as a palliative agent. We use lutetium-177. And a lot of isotopes are produced in the nuclear reactor and thanks that you know we had the nuclear reactor Apsara reactor commissioned in 1956 the Cyrus reactor commissioned in 1961 the Druva reactor commissioned in 1983 India has been playing a very pivotal role in the development of radio pharmaceuticals development of radio isotopes techniques 
now giving a talk on nuclear medicine it will be very unfair if i don't talk about a radioisotope which is called um, technetium 99 technetium 99 this is an isotope which is having only 6 hour half life but this is the most important radionuclide used for medical applications and uh, a 6 hour isotope cannot be transported to the hospitals because uh, by the time it is reaching there all the isotope will be over so what is done is that instead of giving a technetium 99 we give its parent the parent is called the molybdenum 99 what is produced in the reactor uh, this decays to technetium 99 and this technetium 99 will be separated in the nuclear medicine department and it is used for imaging studies how do they do it this is how the generator will come into the hospitals and uh, it has it is all the activity is kept in under the lead pots and uh, this is the molybdenum is absorbed in an alumina column and you send some uh, sodium chloride through it and we will be getting pertechnetate now this pertechnetate we can convert into different chemical molecules we can convert into you know around 100 chemical molecules out of which about um, you know more than 100 actually out of which about 20 chemical molecules are used as radio pharmaceuticals see for example you want to see the brain there is a radio pharmaceutical you want to study the heart there is a radio pharmaceutical you want to see what is your liver function is fine there is a radio pharmaceutical available for it the kidney there is a radio pharmaceutical available by manipulating the the pertechnetate or the technetium into different complexes we develop a lot of radio pharmaceuticals which are used in uh, diagnostic imaging and i will just mention about a single radio pharmaceutical and its application which is the most widely used now you know many people get the cardiac diseases when the cardiac disease is coming uh, the people at uh, the doctor will say that you know you go for a treadmill test maybe uh, you go for an echoradiography or you go for an angiography or angioplasty but in united states if a cardiac if a patient is having a cardiac problem they will say that you will have to undergo a nuclear scan and what is that nuclear scan they call it as a thallium scan or a technetium scan a radio pharmaceutical a technetium radio pharmaceutical is given this is the molecular structure of it given to this the patient will be first allow asked to do an exercise for about 15 20 minutes then the radio and the the patient will come under stress and the radio pharmaceutical is injected to the patient and then he is taken to the um, under the gamma camera this is the gamma camera and the, the imaging will be done and the doctor the nuclear medicine physician will get lot of information from this particular imaging i will show you the image you assume that this is the heart now suppose you what you want to know is in cardiac in a coronary artery disease how is the blood flow in different part of the heart now by this doing this uh, technique which we call it as a tomography the heart can be cut into different pieces electronically you are not cutting the heart but you take the image you cut the heart in vertical axis horizontal axis and transverse axis and you get these images this is the amount of radioactivity which is taken at this spot this is the amount of radioactivity you taken at there and this the heart is cut and you get the radioactivity at different parts now if you see such an image the doctor sees such an image he will say that the heart is fine there is no problem with the heart it is uh, okay the imaging is good now if there is a disease this is how the scan will look you find that the, there is very little activity over here there is very little activity there is very little activity that means the blood flow to the heart is not good and that patient is having the problem because of that and the, the cardiologist will know what is the next step to be done for that so likewise the nuclear medicine department the bread and butter of nuclear medicine department earlier used to be the bone scan a patient is having cancer the doctor want to know how, what is the problem with the patient whether the cancer is primary secondary or tertiary they used to refer it to the nuclear medicine department and a bone scan will be done with the 
MDP, that is with the technetium complex to methylene diphosphonate. You know, the, we are all chemists, we know what is a complex. So methylene diphosphonate is uh, taken and that this will be the image what we'll be getting it. So that's for what I have uh, spoken is actually <coughs> regarding the use of uh, neutron excess radioisotope. Now we will go back to go to neutron deficient isotope. This is what I am doing in Cochin now. So neutron deficient isotope, let us say that we have oxygen. We, have, we know oxygen 16 is stable, oxygen 18 is stable. Now from oxygen 18, if you want to remove one uh, neutron or add on neutron, this is very difficult. So what you want to do is that you want to push out one, uh, you want to introduce one proton to this oxygen 18. So that one proton, once it is added, the number will become nine and that nine is actually fluorine. So proton is positive and the nucleus is positive. So it will not enter because the moment the proton will come near the nucleus, it will be repelling. So in order to the proton to enter into the nucleus, you need to give a lot of energy to this proton so that is accomplished by using what is called a accelerator. That is you take this water or the hydrogen, remove the electron and attract it to a negative electrode, then to another electrode, another negative electrode. And when it is coming out, it will be having a lot of energy. This is what is called the linear accelerator. And by using a linear accelerator, we can get protons of higher energy and these protons of higher energy will come and hit the oxygen 18 and this oxygen 18 will remove one neutron and it will become fluorine 18 and this is an important radionuclide for medical applications. Now, one of the problem with the linear accelerator was that as the proton energy was needed was higher and higher and higher, the linear accelerator length used to increase more and more. And finally, the accelerator length used to be almost a kilometer, you know. In one of the accelerators in California has gone under a highway to another, another uh, compound, you know. So there was a person called Hugh um, Lawrence. He was uh, working in California. He had a wonderful idea. Now you have a particle, which is a particle which is moving in a linear way, moving in a linear way. And if you apply a magnetic field to this particle, the particle will start deflecting. So he wanted the particles to be kept within a circle, within a cycle. It should go in a cycle and the energy should increase. So he has designed this uh, medicine machine which is called the cyclotron a five inch machine this was uh, he had this idea and he demonstrated that the particles can be accelerated by using this sort of machines what is the principle of it you have uh, two electro electrodes there you have the and the two electromagnets which are kept on uh, other sides you allow a particle to come inside. The particle will travel from one electrode and this electrode will be kept then um, negative. It will jump to this electrode, this jump to this electrode and it will keep circulating and it will circulate and it will finally come out. And when it is coming out, it will be having a lot of energy. This was one of the very wonderful uh, uh, discovery by this uh, gentleman called uh, Lawrence. And he got Nobel Prize for this um, uh, discovery. And why, this why these machines were uh, discovered? Not for nuclear medicine. The physicists, they wanted to study what is uh, the atoms. In order to study the atoms, they used actually the X-rays. Now, when you use the X-rays, you cannot study the nucleus. And if you really want to study the nucleus, you need particles which have the wavelength equivalent to that of the size of the atom. So these charged particle accelerators were uh, discovered or made for the purpose of physicists. The physicists wanted these machines 
and these machines were made for them but in the world now there are about 2000 uh, such particle accelerator maybe about uh, 2000 such particle accelerators in uh, different parts of the world and these accelerators they are not used for uh, Uh, physics application they are actually now used for medical application you see this uh, particular uh, slide this is what i have in our uh, kochin center uh, this is the cyclotron which is uh, remaining inside the uh, the in this inside this uh, shield because you know this cyclotron makes a lot of radioactivity so it has to be shielded so this is the cyclotron so from this fine inch cyclotron the cyclotron size has gone higher and higher and if you want higher energy you need more radius for the cyclotron so now if you look at uh, the fluorine 18 what i have talked to you earlier this fluorine 18 this is radioactive it has got a half life of something like about um, 110 minutes and in this 110 minutes it is going to decay to half and what happens is that it will be the fluorine will uh, the decay to oxygen 18 and a positron will come out the positron is nothing but a negative electron the negative electron will come out and this is going to lose its energy and after losing the energy it will catch one electron and the proton and the electron will uh, join together it will get annihilated and there will be two gamma rays emitted in two directions you see one gamma ray is coming to this side and one gamma ray is going to this side and this is what we use it for imaging now this is the imaging technique you have the radiation detectors kept all around the in ring size and the radio pharmaceutical is uh, given to this uh, patient the patient suppose it is a radio pharmaceutical which will accumulate in the brain accumulate in the brain you can take the image the radiation which is coming out in mean, both the sides will be picked up this we call it as a coincidence imaging and after the coincidence imaging the image will be processed and it will finally come to this shape this is how the human brain looks a normal human brain looks where lot of radioactivity is taken at different parts of the brain and if the brain is not working active the activity distribution will be less if somebody is listening music the activity distribution will be different now what is the radio pharmaceutical use in this study this is what is called glucose glucose is nothing but sugar we use this uh, sugar molecule the sugar molecule will be labeled with uh, fluorine the one of the hydroxyl group will be taken out and the fluorine will be added to this and once that is given you can get images like this but the main advantage of this fluorine molecule is actually for cancer imaging so this is what we do what i do in kochin um, um, laboratory and many people ask me what do you do i say that i make uh, radioactive medicines and they will say that, oh you must be using uh, uranium 230 uranium there no i say no i don't use uranium then how do you make these radioactive materials i say that i use water i have this uh, o18 water which is there we put in the uh, put in the accelerator and subsequent that when you put in the accelerator you will uh, get irradiated with proton and you will get be getting fluorine 18 so fluorine 18 uh, will be labeled to to, to uh, fluor fluorodeoxy glucose fdg which is called the molecule of the millennium the molecule of the millennium because this is used all over the world every cancer patient will need this molecule for cancer imaging so now if fluorine fdg is given to a normal human being the glucose is accumulated in the heart the glucose is accumulated in the brain and rest of it is actually excreted through the kidneys so this is how the image will look for a patient who is a normal the, there is you see a, the heart you can see you can see the brain now you look at this uh, image on the left side this is a patient who is having uh, breast cancer the patient has gone to the um, oncologist the oncologist said that you know you get a pet ct imaging and the patient has seen that you know there is a lot of activity in the left breast there is a lot of activity at different places you can see a lot of secondary 
cancers, you can see a lot of secondary cancers. Now, the oncologist uh, will uh, say that, okay, I need to give a chemotherapy to you. And after about uh, three um, uh, doses of chemotherapy, you again go to the PET-CT department or the nuclear medicine departments, and they will do one more imaging. Now, after three uh, chemotherapy, if the patient comes to the nuclear medicine department, and if this sort of image is coming, you can see the cancer has reduced, the cancer uh, in this place has vanished. Of course, here it is there. The doctor is happy. The doctor says that, okay, the medicine is effective. I need not change the medicine. I can do the same chemotherapy. The same medicine can be injected and give another three or four doses. And after three or four doses, the patient will come to one more time to the cancer hospital, to the nuclear medicine department. And probably if you get an image like this, the patient is happy, the doctor is happy, the cancer is gone. Now the doctor will also advise the patients that, oh, you come back up after an year, I want to do one more PET CT and every year you come back, I will do one more PET CT. That means PET CT is very important for cancer diagnosis, cancer staging, uh, to find out the response of medicine and also for finding the recurrence of cancer. Now there is a problem with this uh, FDG, fluorodeoxyglucose. The F18 has got a half-life of only 108 minutes. What does it mean? If I have an X quantity of uh, FDG, after about two hours, it will be half. Another two hours, it will be one-fourth. Another two hours, it will be one-eighth. Another two hours, it will be one-sixth, one-sixteenth. That means the radioisotope or the medicine will vanish in about six hours, everything will be lost. So now what do we, uh, what the patient has to do if they want to do such an imaging, they will have to go to the, the places where there is a new the accelerator is there, where, the, where there is a cyclotron. Now this is the map of India. You know, ours is a very large country, a large country with um, North to south is uh, something like about uh, 3,200 kilometers. Um, <coughs> no, uh, west to east is um, uh, about 3,000 kilometers. It's a very large country. And if you look at where are these cyclotrons there? Now, I have a let us assume that we have a patient in Kerala and the cyclotron is in, um, uh, in Bombay. The radio pharmaceuticals cannot be brought to Kerala. What do we need to do? The patient has to go all the way to Bombay or all the way to Delhi or to Chandigarh and get the imaging that. Now the cost involved, the patient has to travel, the patient is a patient, he need accompanying persons. Generally we all, um, we will take a couple of accompanying persons. Then the, all the people have to go and stay in, um, in uh, remote places. The expense is very mounting. So. In 2014 or 15, the first PET CT machine in Kerala had come. This was in Amrita Hospital. And again, our group has put a PET CT machine in uh, Kim's Hospital. And we used to get the medicines from Bangalore. There are a couple of uh, cyclotrons which have come in Bangalore. And they used to give us the medicines. And we used to pay something like about 60,000 for uh, imaging about uh, five, six patients. Because they need to make a lot of activity and the lot of activity will have to be transported to Trivandrum by flight. You know, the activity has to be given two hours earlier, two hour flight and then two hours for clearance, about six hours. They need to give a lot of activity for doing this imaging studies. So this was the time when uh, in 2013, uh, this map, there was no cyclotron here and that was the time when I was... Um, superannuating from um, Department of Atomic Energy and these people, this gentleman, Dr. Ajit Joy, uh, Matthew Francis Katokaran, Dr. Asan Kunyi and Dr. Mibujos Netikaran, these people um, thought we have to do something for Kerala because our cancer patients, including some of their relatives had to go to Bombay or uh, Bangalore. They felt that, you know, we have to do something for our, uh, our uh, state and we need to set up a, a cyclotron and uh, in Kerala. So 
so this was a very novel idea they had asked me can you join with our group and i said that okay i will join and that was the time when i was returning 2013 that that was in 2012 and nearly at the end of my 2012 the department of atomic energy said that you know why don't you stay for two more years then i was in a fix i had already committed to a group who was willing to put uh, something like about a huge amount of money to uh, to put a cyclotron in uh, kerala and i have already committed then i had to tell my department that you know i will be a, i'm a very thankful to the department for uh, giving me that extension but i would like to leave and go back to my state and help to this group to set up this uh, cyclotron in kerala so this is the vision of our uh, hospital this is uh, this hospital is called the molecular uh, hospitals this is under construction and uh, in this part of the hospital we have the cyclotron cut and the cyclotron is there and it is functioning for the last 3 uh, years so this is the cyclotron what we have it is a siemens eclipse hp cyclotron which is a 11 mev proton machine it gives a beam energy of about 60 microamps we get uh, two beams on the opposite side so that is something like about uh, 120 microamps we get it and of course when i show this cyclotron sitting nicely in this bunker uh, th people think that oh so simple but it was not simple it was a huge job because this cyclotron weighs something like something like about uh, 47000 kilograms this had to be brought to kerala and uh, you can imagine you know bringing uh, three containers to kerala and trying to unload and what is the sort of behavior we will expect from our people in kerala we had to uh, to go through all those uh, damages and finally this has to be the cyclotron has to be taken to the building uh, through this uh, there is a big hole uh, kept there and the cyclotron was introduced to the bunker and then finally we closed it and this is actually 70 cm of concrete because no radioactivity should come out of the cap out and do an irradiation to the patients to the public and once that work is done it is very nice it is very simple uh, you have the our uh, control oh sorry i have to thank um, my friend and colleague uh, dr kns uh, mr kns nayar he is from baba atomic research center both of us retired on the same day and he did all this job all this job of you know uh, the mechanical job electrical job electronics job everything had been done by this gentleman and thanks to that we have a very beautiful um, machine sitting in cochin and this is the control room where our um, uh, cyclotron operator is sitting and uh, operating the cyclotron we have the chemistry laboratories you know we handle lot of radioactivity Uh, in this place we handle we make almost about 10 curie of activity which is a large amount of activity so this has to be handled in heavy hot cells so that there is no radiation coming outside this place if you measure the radiation here this will be less than 1 microsievert but inside it will be several thousands of hours and we also make radio pharmaceuticals so we have to do everything under a good manufacturing uh, practices so you this is a class c laboratory and we have actually a class a dispensing hot cell over here and once the radio pharmaceutical is produced this is what you want to do we is to take the glucose we try to add a fluorine 18 to it and in order to do that we have to do a good amount of chemistry with the radioactive material this is not easy this has to be done uh, through the machines this we call it as the uh, synthesis uh, modules uh, this is kept inside this uh, hot cells it is kept inside this each each one of this uh, cabin has got a synthesizer and we do this um, synthesis by remote everything will be controlled by computer and we will finally get the radio pharmaceutical through this port the radio pharmaceutical will come out and it will be packed in this sort of uh, let pods and that let pod will be um, taken to the hospitals so these are the synthesis module we have different synthesis modules which we can make a lot of uh, radio pharmaceuticals other than uh, fdg 
so one of the worry is that you know how safe is our system our system is very safe because when we do the synthesis there is some amount of radioactive gases which will be formed we collect all the gases in these tanks and we will keep it for about 12 to 14 hours and allow it to complete the half life is 2 hours allow it to completely decay then only we will discharge it to the atmosphere that to after filtration through hepa and carbon So this is our uh, radio analytical laboratory. We do the quality control here. We have a gas chromatograph here. We do the microbiological studies here. We measure the endotoxin, and if the radio pharmaceutical is fine, this will be shipped in uh, these sort of uh, plastic containers. This is our radiation safety officer who will do the analysis, who will uh, see how much of radioactivity is there, whether it is safe for transport. Because this is all done under the the license of. atomic energy regulatory body and this is a very very strict body they don't want any unwanted radiation to be given to the patient to the public so this is where uh, the map of kerala this is where our cyclotron is there thanks to the availability of our cyclotron now there are about 13 pet ct centers in kerala there are three in calicut there is one in trichur there is uh, four in cochin this is in uh, aster amala sorry aster uh, amrda uh, melekshore and uh, one private center this is our own center in the kadidas hospital uh, this is in saint gregorius and then we have actually the our own center in trivandrum then uh, we have the regional cancer center and also we have our uh, kims uh, center is there then we also supply our radio pharmaceuticals to coimbatore we also supply our radio pharmaceuticals to uh, nagargovil in tamil nadu now look at it we have uh, you know these people have uh, had the money they wanted to put this cyclotron and thanks to this cyclotron all this um, pet ct centers or the nuclear medicine centers had to had come and the patients are happy the patient need not go a patient in uh, Karnur can go to Calicut. The patient from here can go to Trichur, and the Palakkad can go to Trichur, and the patient's comfort is definitely increased. And we had one problem, you know. We when we put our machine, the suppliers from the Bangalore, suppliers from Bangalore, they reduced the cost. They said that okay, now we will give you instead of whatever they were giving me at uh, giving us at sixty thousand rupees. They said that okay, this is how now we will give it at. Thirty thousand rupees. So our project was a bit, um, you know, becoming a bit difficult. But a number of uh, machines had come. But now our nuclear medicine uh, departments are aware how important it is that we have this radio pharmacy, this cyclotron in Cochin. Now in the COVID season, all the flights have stopped. No material is coming from outside, and the border crossing is so difficult. and all these pet ct machines all these nuclear medicine departments in calicut uh, you know the trichur um, in ernakulam this is working because the cyclotron is available in cochin just imagine if there was no cyclotron in cochin our patients had to go to bombay and if they had to go to bombay there are no flights and when they come back they will have to go in quarantine for 16 days 14 days so you can really imagine the amount the tremendous amount of um, impact the social uh, life of uh, kerala you know the health care of kerala now all this is done by not by me but my young colleagues uh, these are the young colleagues who my picked from uh, uh, college uh, colleges in kerala this is how my radiation safety officer this is uh, cyclotron uh, these two are the cyclotron experts also they operate the cyclotron this is the center manager and uh, these are the chemists so this i am coming to the last 5 minutes of my talk a lot of people ask me you know whenever i want to recruit the students when i want to students one of the questions being asked including you know their parents will come and ask me is it safe to work in this place i tell them look i have worked with radioactivity for 40 years and you look at me i am alive i am stable but i also tell it to them about this gentleman Uh, this is uh, glen t seberg this is the person who has discovered all the transuranium elements 
from plutonium, americium, curium, berkelium, californium, einsteinium, fermium, mendelevium, nobelium, and finally, with his own name, he discovered a the last element. What he discovered, it was named as cyborgium under him. And this gentleman, who is born in 1912, died in 1999. 87 years he lived, and he worked. I am sure he worked with lots and lots of radioactivity. You know the U.S. systems. Unless the professor works, his students will not work. Not very, not very much like our Indian system. So this is. Uh, so I will. I just put this uh, image of uh, Glenn Seberg and tell that you know, look, he worked with a lot of radioactivity and he lived a full life. And of course, he had a very um, well-known uh, student who is called A.C. Wall. He is the discoverer of plutonium. And his student was uh, Dr. David Troutner. David Troutner is a radio pharmaceutical chemist, and he was also he started his career as a nuclear um, chemist. Later on, he lived, he lived, moved to uh, radio pharmaceutical chemistry, and uh, I am fortunate that I have done my postdoctoral uh, research with uh, David Troutner, so I can say that I have a very good uh, pedigree. My grandfather, our great grandfather in radio chemistry, is. Uh, Glenn Seberg, Glenn Seberg to AC Wall to David Troutner to myself. Definitely, I have picked up a lot of radio chemistry from this lineage. So I'll conclude my talk. Uh, radio pharmaceuticals are uh, used for radioactive medicine is used for diagnosis and therapy, and radio pharmaceuticals are nothing but chemical molecules labeled with a radioactive isotope. And what are these chemical molecules? Look at it. I did want to put a lot of chemistry here, but my last point, I had to put a lot of chemistry, a little amount of chemistry. These wonderful molecules. These molecules are all radio pharmaceuticals. This is used for brain imaging. This is used for bone imaging. This is used for uh, prostate cancer imaging. And some people ask us, you know, as chemists, how do you design such molecules? The molecules are so different, but the molecules are very good radio pharmaceuticals. I tell them the radio pharmaceutical science is something like an art, you know. Look at Shobana. Shobana is uh, one of the most beautiful actresses in uh, South Indian actresses. And uh, this is one of her dance poses. She is able to practice this because she has got an inborn talent. She has been, uh, she has put a lot of effort to come to this perfection. So the radio pharmaceutical science is also similar to that. You should have the talent. You have to have the but to have to have your effort put, and you need to work hard to get into these new, uh, newer and newer molecules. These beautiful molecules are thanks to chemists, thanks to wonderful chemists. And you can imagine that the nuclear you can do an NMR or MRI or a CT imaging with the machine, and the doctor is there or the technologist is there. You can do it. But you cannot do a nuclear medicine imaging unless these radio pharmaceuticals are there. So I will close my slide by my talk by putting this slide. This I have picked up from the National Geographic. This is like you know this small child is seeing the world first time. The world is existing for millions of years. But as far as this child is concerned, there is lots and lots of things to learn from this child, and. In science, it is also enthusiasm. Maybe the world is a world is there for millions of years, but the science is there ever for us to discover. Lots and lots of new things can be discovered in science, which is good for the human beings. Like what I have mentioned, the radio pharmaceuticals are essential for the management of uh, cancer. And I will like to close my talk um, by thanking all of you. I think we have nearly about 95 people, uh, 91 people present. So thank you, thank you very much. And this.